Um, hello, everyone. So uh, the challenge which was given to us was uh, farm churned premium flavored compound butter. And hence, we developed You Butter Believe It. Well, it's very interesting as we go forward. So um, our agenda for today, marketing would be covered by me, Shrutkirti Dhuri. Uh, sensory would be covered by Mengfusai, that's Gary. Nutrition and labeling would be covered by Christy Pfeiffer. Packaging would be covered by Samruti Jada. And processing, food safety, and regulations would be covered by Christina Coates. So here we start. So just a basic idea of butter. What is butter? Butter is a dairy product made from churning of milk or cream. And how it is made? The churning process separates the butter fat from buttermilk. That's how we make it. So butter is fat. And then it said that, well, that's not healthy. Common assumptions from people are that butter is not healthy, then why should we consume it? Why should we use it in our daily lifestyle? Well, we are here to change that for you because our butter has a lot of health fats, which is going to change your perspective. So over the years, butter has shown to have uh, some good nutritional impacts, health facts, and that's why the consumption over here in US has been increasing day by day. And butter is all over in the news. Like before, there was an assumption that it's not healthy, and then the, the consumption level started increasing, and hence it's all over the news. Well, looking at the statistics, it clearly shows that the consumption of butter in the United States has been increasing from 2000 to 2017. Well, increased consumption of butter over the years shows the market potential for the development of new butter products. And hence, we come into action. Some of the top brands in US that are Lando Lex, Kerry Gold, Challenge Butter, are doing really good. And there are different flavored butters out there. Well, we have done something of our own. But before that, let's look at the products which are already there in the market. So the products which there are in the market, and there are flavored butter as well. So Lando Lakes has this amazing pumpkin pie spice. Then there is something called a sporkini mushroom butter, which was really new to me when I did the research. So, and there are vegan butter and uh, Irish butter. So we developed something of our own, and we called it You Butter Believe It. And we have made the, the best part of a butter is that it has contrasting flavors in it. And the three flavors we worked on are chili garlic, cinnamon vanilla, and pistachio sunflower. Moving forward, why our butter is so good? And why, how does we differentiate it from other butters in the market? Well, the most important thing in our butter is the ingredient which we use, that is the cream. We have used the Gerson cow, uh, Gerson cow cream, which is made from the, uh, uh, which we have got from the European market. I mean, uh, this is a European cow butter, sorry. So, um, so, the, uh, so the best part of the butter is that it has natural rich yellow color. Then it contains A2 proteins. It's rich in vitamins. They say it's 5% more vitamins, so it's a cool thing, right? It contains butyrate, it's good for gut. Then good source of congelated linoleic acid, has anti-cancerous properties, contains no growth hormones. We call our product gluten-free. It's keto and paleo-friendly. Our flavors are globally inspired flavors and has amazing mouthfeel. You'll know that when you taste it. So we have done some SWOT analysis. The strength of a product is the product versatility. It's a premium quality product. It's aesthetically pleasing because it has a rich yellow color. Better nutrition and macro distribution. It's less processed and globally accepted flavors. It's good for all the pellet styles. Then the opportunities. Opportunities is line extension. And since there's nothing like this in the market, hence it has a growth potential. The weakness over here we have listed down is higher cost because the cream which we get is really expensive out in the market. That lower butter production yield as compared to the conventional one. Flavor appeal. Maybe not everyone would prefer our flavors. Then the threat which we have are the yield from Guernsey cow is lower than the other breeds. And if demand increases, it would be difficult to meet. Who can consume our butter? Well, that's the best part. Everyone can but if consumed in moderation. Well, our, we call our product keto and paleo friendly, and that's why it works for all those people who are on special diets. Now, just to give an idea about what is keto, 
is the floor is carbs because they cannot consume carbs that much carbs so we call it as super low carb diet and the carb intake is less than 20 grams the foods they need to avoid is anything carbohydrates that's bread pastas sugars etc and the food they eat are meats nuts fishes etc paleo diet aka a caveman diet the meme is really funny right so uh, the paleo diet runs on the same food our hunter gatherer ancestors supposedly ate those include less processed foods and uh, the food includes like meat fishes which are high in protein and yeah foods that were not available to uh, paleolithic humans such as grains dairy products are to be avoided but still yet the newer style version of modernized paleolithic diet they do have dairy products inclusion in that the ways to apply a butter so a butter can be used in different ways i just listed few like chili garlic butter can be used for salad dressing chopping on grilled fish then we can use it for omelet popcorn topper it tastes amazing cinnamon vanilla can go on again salad uh, salad dressing smoothies coffee bomb desserts pancakes and then pistachio sunflower would again go on grilled fish breast and then cheese pizza crust vegetable uh, uh, vegetable curries and all of that so and there are many applications out of it where would you find our butter you would find our butter at restaurants diners keto paleo websites grocery stores brand websites e-commerce bakery and artisanal and specialty shops how do we promote our butter so we are promoting our butter through expos free sampling social media and food safety people like i'm a developer and i'm presenting i'm promoting my product right now so that's what i'm doing then the magazines advertisements tv commercials and not uh, last but not the least food bloggers that's a new way what if i give my product to martha stewart there are going to be million viewers for that and that's how i'm going to promote my product did we convince you yet to buy our product well if no my friends are going to explain you why you should So look at the happy faces this was the aftermath after everyone had our butter so i'm sure you're going to be the same well over to you gary <laughs> thank you okay so it's gary and i'm going to introduce the sensory and consumer testing part so for the uh sensory test we have analytical and effective part for analytical it's used for company to let them to uh distinguish with what kind of the factor of the of or the attribute to decide uh they want to change the part product and uh introduce the new product to the market and for the effective one effect, uh, effective test is for consumer we will give them product and effective test and we will take some data from them and try to uh, adjust our product so first the the first one analytical discrimination test i choose the pair comparison because uh in um the making uh butter we not only use the gerson one but we also purchase the other milk from the market and we make two two kind of the butter so if you you see the uh butter you can feel like the different this one is the gerson milk is made from the gerson milk and this one is from the normal uh normal milk and i don't know what you feel uh but if i see the uh gerson milk one i will feel passion and it trigger me some desire to eat this butter so for the pair comparison one uh it will measure single tribute so no matter on the color or on the fat content because it contain like around 30% of fats rather than the normal milk so it can give you more satisfaction of our butter so if we uh, but uh, for this quantitative descriptive analysis part if you want to see the whole gra whole map of this uh, butter then i can list some factors that you can track the first one is the aroma the second one is mouth feel the third one is intense intensity of flavor the fourth one is the flavor release the
The reason why I want to release the flavor release is because when people uh, we serve them butter and after they test it, they feels like uh, in the very in the very beginning they didn't feel like any test, but after for a while the uh, butter flavor comes out uh, because uh, this is because uh, our high fat content mitigate the flavor uh, we g we give them. So this is the QDA quantitative descriptive uh, analysis. So finishing the company parts, uh, so I'm gonna to introduce the quantitative effective te test is for the consumer. So the goal is to improve the product, assess the market potential, or, or just look, we try to target the group of the consumer. And it can also be used to support the adver advertising clients. So the major are listed here. The first one is the payer preference test. The second one is the hedonic test. And the, second, uh, the third one is the sample sensory ballots. So uh, for the first one, since this time, we made two different, uh, we made three flavor uh, butter, but we use different, uh, we, uh, sorry, we use two kinds of the milk. So sorry about that. Uh, we will, after we serving you the butter, we will give you some homework and help you to check which one you like it or not. Okay, so this this is the sh sheet. Uh, after we serving you then the butter, then we will provide for you. So for quantitative effective uh, test, we also have hedonic scale, but since uh, we only have 15, 15 mentor, the professional one, and we have like 25 students, which we, I think we are not so profe uh, professional to test the difference of the butter. So this time I, I'm not going to provide it for you guys. And also uh, as well as the sample sensory ballot. So for quantitative effective test, it also includes focus groups and interviews. So for this test, we can either in invite the professional panel panelists to have them uh, test our butter and give us uh, some uh, in, um, advice to uh, give some uh, direction of the market. And interview, we can kind of recruit some uh, people and ask them what what they will use our butter to do and to adjust our product. So as for the uh, gold standard, because we kind of start making this product from zero to right now, and they are uh, under using the sensory test, it can help us to improve this product. And actually, there are so many um, websites that people doing this uh, flavoring compound butter, but they all they all buy the butter from outside and directly add the powder on, uh, the flavor onto it. But we start from making we start from making the butter by using the milk. So I think in this way we can be then. So <laughs> thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Christy. I'm in charge of the nutrition and labeling. So you're probably thinking, you were listening to SK's um, whole speech, and you're probably still wondering why Guernsey cows. Well, um, choosing this over a regular cream. The difference is um, it's a premium A2 cream that has a higher ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids. So what does this mean? Omega-6 are more prevalent in foods that have less nutritional value, such as corn. Whereas omega-3 are those beneficial fatty acids that are prevalent in foods like fatty fish and our butter. So therefore, they are healthier to consume. Also, Guernsey contains 12% higher protein content and um, higher A2 beta casein protein content. And also, it has higher amounts of alka tocopherol, which are helpful for preventing different diseases. Also, Guernsey butter has higher amounts of vitamin A, D, and um, also has 15% more calcium than any other milk product on the market. So um, with that said, that's making it have a better nutritional quality as well. 
And lastly, it has a decrease in moisture content of the final product, which is helping with the nutritional and um, appearance of the product. So all in all, the Guernsey butter has a um, higher nutritional and compositional quality. It is important for those that are adhering to this ketogenic and paleo diet to consume healthy fats, not just fats. So we're going to want to include monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. So the omega-3s are the um, polyunsaturated healthy fats that are beneficial to include. So therefore, in addition, using this premium A2 cream rather than the heavy cream, a regular heavy cream, it's that addition of the omega-3 fatty acids, which is really helpful for people that are trained to obtain a healthier lifestyle, or as SK had mentioned, people just curious about um, a more premium product or uh, the addition of butter into their diet with that tasty flavors as well as a very high quality. So we have three different flavors that were chosen that all vary in different ingredients, providing a different flavor experience and can help with different types of meals. Our product ensures that our consumers have versatil versatility and options when choosing it. For the cinnamon vanilla butter, the cinnamon's purpose was to provide sweetness, ensure shelf stability, and provide um, antioxidants for its consumers. Also, the Swerve product was a sweet, added a sweetness without adding real table sugar and um, therefore in interfering with the carbohydrate and caloric uh, distribution. Lastly, the vanilla extract was utilized for sweetness as well as adding, um, as well as adding flavor. Next, for the chili garlic butter, the dried red pepper uh, flakes were used for antioxidants, properties, spice, as well as helping with satiety for our consumers, keeping them nice and full, as well as a brilliant, beautiful color to our butter. Also, the vegetable oil was helpful for the palatability of the product. Lastly, the garlic is beneficial for flavor. And so on to the pistachio seed, um, pistachio sunflower seed butter. The pistachio and sunflowers um, helped with both flavor and texture. The pistachio helped also create a nice color. So lastly, the salt is great for shelf stability as well as flavor. So these are our formulations for the pistachio, sunflower seed, and the garlic chili butter. And then the next slide we have the cinnamon vanilla butter. We worked hard at formulating our products so that it met the keto and the paleo and premium requirements. We created what we made a gold standard where we weighed out each ingredient in grams and of careful choosing. Some factors that were kept in mind throughout this process were mouthfeel, texture, palatability, color, and overall quality of the product. So for our nutrition label, it is important to have the nutritional panel that is consistent with the 21 CFR 101.9 section D requirements. The new label is being enforced actually January 1st, 2020. So because of using the formulator software, ours is not considered consistent with that, but we still have time to update. The nutrition panel includes information regarding the serving size, declarations per serving, and daily amount of vitamins and minerals. In addition, this is all based upon the 2000 calorie intake diet. And then for the information panel, it's consistent with the 21 CFR 101.2 section A, um, which is including the ingredient list, allergen list, and nutrition label. So for our nutrition claims, we are actually able to call it sugar-free because it contained less than 0.5 grams of sugar, which is consistent with the requirements for a keto or paleo diet. This is according to the 21 CFR 101.6, which is regarding the sugar um, laws on a label. In addition, since the Guernsey cream was used, the amount of omega-3 fatty acids um, can be put onto our label, but it cannot contain the good source or rich in. The FDA does not allow that. So you can do the actual amount, but you can't characterize the level of omega-3s in our product. Lastly, we made it gluten-free because there are less than 20 parts per million of gluten present in our product. Um, within our product, there was, we weren't able to actually enter the Guernsey cream into the formulator, so there is going to be a different in our um, nutrition label, but this is just kind of for reference. So here is our nutritional label that was created for the pistachio sunflower seed, the chili garlic, and the cinnamon vanilla butter. It is evident that both the sugar content and carbohydrate contents were low following our um, ketogenic and paleo qualifications. In addition, the allergens that were labeled um, 
for the pistachio butter it's because it contains milk as well as um, tree nuts. So overall, we were very satisfied with our finished product and how it adhered to our guardrails. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will take you through the packaging of the product. My name is Samruddhi. Uh, so the role of packaging, it is quite evident that the packaging of any product should protect the product from any external contamination and at the same time maintain the safety and the shelf life of the product. The other purpose of packaging was unitization and brand visibility. Uh, there are many factors to be considered uh, like the cost, convenience, preservation, sustainability, simple handling and transport of the product. Also the space used uh, in the stores. Uh, so butter is basically mainly packed in the following types. So the first image that you see on the left is the pat of butter. Um, it is a cuboidal shaped butter. Generally um, uh, it has an aluminum packaging. Uh, then there's the manually molded butter. Uh, this is a hand packed uh, butter which, is, uh, which gives a premium approach to it. The third is the machine molded butter. Uh, this is a better looking uh, butter than the hand packed butter. Uh, the range uh, will vary from 250 to 1 kg per. Um, then the butter in a dish. Um, this is a plastic dish. Now this is a very modern approach for packing butter. It is hygienic and it's practically uh, approachable for all the consumers. Then there's the mini butter. Uh, the gram range is from 7 to 10 grams. Uh, this is individual packed butter and it is generally used in catering and restaurants and very various groups. Uh, then there are butter fingers. Uh, these are pats of butter, you, can't, you can call it as sticks of butter. Uh, there's roll of butter, now this is plastic tube filled with butter. And the last is the jar of butter. This is generally a glass jar or a, maybe can be a plastic container. Uh, if it's a glass jar, you can reuse the container, the consumer can reuse the container. So uh, this is a prototype that we developed for a product. Uh, the first image is a primary packaging. Uh, it's um, a pet plastic uh, uh, container which is sealed. And the secondary packaging is that uh, three of these containers are going to stacked, stacked on top of each other and there will be a secondary packaging for that. Uh, so what is plastic? Uh, plastic is organically synthesized or processed material that has polymers of high molecular weight. Um, you must have seen the numbers 1 to 7 at the bottom or the side of the plastic container. Now what are these numbers? These are raisin this, is, this number is the raisin identification code or the recycling number. Uh, this number provides guidance for the consumers who want to recycle plastic containers and it also gives uh, the type of plastics, uh, type of plastic used. Uh, the USDA, uh, US uh, FDA regulates the safety of all the plastics and used in food packaging and food contact surfaces and the list is there, uh, an approved list is there in the FDA database. So our product uh, was the PET1 product, which is polyethylene terephthalate. Uh, the, poly, the basic building blocks of PET are ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid, which combine to form a polymer chain, which is extruded and quickly cooked into small pellets. And these, can be, these raisins can be uh, heated and then can be given shape accordingly. Uh, so uh, these are widely used in various food uh, products, like packaging of the food products, like soft drinks, uh, salad dressings, vegetable oil bottles, etc. Uh, FDA has approved uh, these uh, the pet plastic products, and yes, these products are completely recyclable. Uh, so what are the properties of pet? Now this plastic is chemically inert; it doesn't react with any of the food substances. Uh, it is fully recyclable and it is an excellent moisture and oxygen barrier, sealable. It does not contain BPA and plasticizer. These are the chemicals that are um, toxic to humans, that are found to be toxic to humans. These react with foods and form toxic substances and then there are various health claims that they are uh, toxic to the human body. 
Um, the plastic is resistant to microorganisms and does not biologically degrade. It is extremely lightweight and efficiently uh, shatterproof, and it can be easily transported. So each year, 1.5 billion pounds of PET bottles are recycled in the United States. Um, uh, so the, recyc the current recycling rate for PET bottle is 31%, uh, and in Europe it's 52%. Because of the lightweight, which is uh, a major key component for this kind of plastic that we use, uh, it can be easily transported and it's energy efficient. Uh, so for our packaging of the product, we use the manually operated pilot scale, which was available in the IFISH uh, campus uh, it can do it is manually operated and it can do one to two pouches per minute but for commercialization there are uh, various machines and involved so they can do 10 to 12 pouches per minute it depends on the volume and the packaging size uh, these are just uh, how the machines pack the product yeah thank you Hi, I'm Christina. Um, I'm going to talk about processing and food safety. So um, when we're talking about butter, it's important that we meet our standard of identity um, based in the Code of Federal Regulations. So we have to meet a minimum of 80% butter fat, uh, maximum of 16% moisture. We'll end up with 1% to 2% milk fat solids, and also have to meet our microbial content standards, which are shown up there on the slide. Um, so we have two process flow diagrams that I'll kind of briefly go over. Um, so in the kitchen and pilot plant, we receive in our pasteurized cream. Um, that cream is churned until the, um, the milk fat and the butter fat separate, or the butter fat and the butter milk separate. Um, there's several different factors that impact um, how that, uh, the moisture content and how that uh, butter comes together. Um, and the, the temperature and the churn rate are the biggest factors based on um, the literature research that we did that impact yield, our fat versus moisture content, um, and how, what the churning time is. Um, after that f fat starts to come together, um, the butter is strained, the buttermilk comes, comes off, um, and then the butter ha must be washed. Um, that helps to get any residual buttermilk out of the system, um, which resolves some of the early spoilage issues that may occur if it's not well washed. Um, the water is kneaded out, and then um, the flavoring ingredients are kneaded in. Um, after that, we have packaging and then storage at our refrigerated temperatures. So um, there's a couple big differences between our benchtop and pilot plant versus commercialization. Um, one is whenever, because we are a uh, butter processor and we are taking in milk from another uh, dairy plant, we must repasteurize it even though it may be, it's already pasteurized coming in. Um, it must be repasteurized in the facility that the finished product processing takes place. So um, that is a, a really important piece. So the cream coming in must be inspected for quality and pass our quality standards, then it is pasteurized. Um, and it ties into a continuous butter churn, which is typically what's used here in the US. So I'll, I'll jump forward to show a little bit more about how that works. So the churning and separating takes place at the kind of front end of this piece of equipment. And then there's two working sections, which are those conveyors on an incline. The first working section is really for separating out the uh, buttermilk and expressing that out. And the second section does that additional kneading, and that's under a vacuum, which helps to de-aerate the butter, impacts the color and the texture. And then also at the beginning of that second working section is where the flavoring and the salt is added in. So after that continuous butter churn addition, all of our flavors go in. Um, it gets stored into kind of a surge capacity area of the butter silo, and then into our fill package, which Sam talked about, um, that packaging equipment. And then the package is sealed. Um, metal detection is really important as we have a lot of metal contact in this process. That's going to be an important piece for food safety. Goes into storage and then distribution. So you'll notice that I've got the uh, CCPs on there, the critical control points, which are going to tie into the HACCP plan, which I'll talk about in uh, a couple slides. Um, so 
Just wanted to share a few pictures of the equipment. So something to highlight is the pilot plant is really just going to be a scaled up version of the kitchen. Um, talking with our uh, other butter manufacturers in the industry, this is typically um, what, what they use um, in doing their pilot plant testing. In commercialization, we've got our um, high temperature short time pasteurization equipment, continuous butter churn, and then the metal detector, in addition to the packaging equipment that Sam talked about. So, okay, so um, we have our HACCP plan here in the interest of time. Um, I won't spend too much time on that. I've got our critical pathogenic microorganisms of concern highlighted as well. Um, in terms of quality control, I mentioned some of the things that we need to do to make sure that our incoming cream and our raw ingredients are in uh, the acceptable quality conditions that we expect. We also have several in-process parameters that we need to, we need to look at. Um, and our finished product testing, as well as in investigating, making sure that our packaging materials are stored in a sanitary manner, and our packaged product um, is going to pass all of our testing that's required. Um, shelf life determination, we will need to go into accelerated um, shelf life testing in order to define shelf life, especially because our butter is going to be impacted by our inclusions and our flavor um, ingredients. We have our GMPs that are going to be um, critical for us to maintain hygiene in our facility. Um, we also um, have to consider hazards for home use after it leaves our hands and goes into the consumer's hands, some of the things that they are going to need to consider in order to make sure their food is safe. And then this is kind of a summary of our regulations and everything that we needed to consider as we were going through all of our requirements. So we wanted to leave you with a kind of a last impression of what our butter is really about. Slow churned, creamy, and spreadable, our line of premium butter is made from full fat cream milked from Guernsey cows and blended with globally inspired natural ingredients for an easy flavorful addition to your keto, paleo, or simply gourmet diet. So um, we really hope that our presentation, you know, kind of shared some of, some of the ideas and the, the things that we went through um, through this process. Um, this is kind of a mock-up of our uh, packaging design, and uh, we look forward to your questions and comments. Thank you. Okay, so now <clears throat> the student... Uh, team members will distribute samples to the mentors and at the same time we have uh, a microphone it's actually I think they call it a, a, a catch box or something I'm not gonna throw this around you know, so what do you call it catch it's a catch box testing testing you see how that works don't speak from the side speak from the top so anyone that has questions and then I have to give this wireless mic to one of the student teams <clears throat> Are you ready for a question? A little bit. So um, as Gary mentioned in the presentation, we did make a batch with the Guernsey cream, and we made a batch with a uh, more conventional cream that you'll find in the market, which is likely a blend of Jersey and Holstein cream. So um, we have also just a slightly different um, ballot for you. So um, you'll see your samples labeled with a square or a circle and a number, um, and that'll correspond to the ballot. So we have um, basically six samples for each of you. So it'll be three, um, two of each flavor with the different creams. Yeah, so if anyone has any questions, we're, we're ready. <laughs> uh, yes, um, the, the, one of the uh, SWOT analysis comments you made was about the higher cost of, uh, of Guernsey cream. Uh, how much higher is your cost of goods going to be as a result of that, and how are you going to price your product versus sort of other premium flavored butters in the market? Yeah. Um, you're saying the, the price? The cost of the milk, yeah, the cost of the milk. It was in your SWOT analysis. Sure. Yeah. What was the price of? So, so, sorry. so the, the cost of a pint of the Guernsey cream retail was about um, 
um, which yielded us about a half a cup of butter. So when we were looking at, um, you know, the overall cost of production and then just really, we kind of thought about our um, cost more around what else is on the market that's comparable. So basically, like for a lot of ketogenic diets, they use the MCT oil, and that for like per serving is about a dollar sixty. So we were, we kind of took that and based it off of that because those people are more willing to kind of spend more money on a product that they're um, that's desirable as well as in their um, diet. So we were thinking about twelve ninety nine for our um, product. Twelve ninety nine. Oh, yeah. Um, so I know, obviously, you don't have time to run shelf stability testing, uh, but I'm just curious what uh, you all what you all think compared to, and I honestly don't know what the shelf life of butter is, but yeah. um, what you would suspect compared to other butters, do you think it would be the same? Do you think it'd be less or more? And yeah. you know, why do you think that? Sure. Yeah, I kind of had breezed through that slide in the deck to, so that we could hit all of our points. But um, so anecdotally and through the research that we found, just salted butter, um, the shelf life, if it's refrigerated, is around three months and if it's kept frozen is around nine months. That's pretty conservative. There's some research that shows that it's much longer than that. Um, the, the primary thing that we're looking at in terms of shelf life is the oxidative rancidity. So that's the first kind of quality point that, that tends to fail. Um, so because of our, our flavor inclusions, some of them are antioxidant, but some of them are also may, you know, increase that oxidative rancidity. So the, um, garlic example, uh, it, I, so the thought is that the shelf life is probably going to be a little bit shorter because of the flavor inclusions, and then that could be balanced out by some of the, um, the stability extensions that we've had. The chili flakes can sometimes be antioxidant, the cinnamon is antioxidant. In the cinnamon, we don't have any salt addition, so that we're going to need a little bit more to help us extend our shelf life there. So there's a lot of different factors, and it's really going to be kind of an um, evaluation, and based on data is going to be really important for that one. This is a really groovy way to ask a question <laughs> into a box. Um, so I'm curious about some of the marketing claims relative to the nutrition facts. And if you did a comparison between regular butter or another butter and your butter, because when I was looking at the nutrition facts label, it pretty much had a bunch of zeros on it, and then it had a calorie, and then I think it had 10% for saturated fat, and yet there were all these claims that were being made. Would you like to comment? Well, basically, that is a completely different type of cream, too, unfortunately, because in Formulator, they don't have the type of cream that we were looking for. So that is pretty much just for reference to use to show that there was low carbohydrate and um, low sugar in our product, as well as it being, we had made a claim that it was gluten-free. So the problem was Formulator, that software, doesn't have a2 Guernsey cream for us to formulate into our product. So, um, and I know you didn't have the chance to do the research, but who do you envision as the, the consumer for this, and how do you think they'll use it on a regular basis? Yeah, so basically for our guardrails, it was the ketogenic and the paleo. So they, for a keto, they have to uh, consume 5 to 10% carbohydrates. So this is kind of a really good way to, and of those carbohydrates is predominantly going to be their vegetable servings. So this is a great way to flavor um, vegetables as well as you could use it almost as a salad dressing or just different aspects of that on meat or um, fish, anything like that. So my, so my question is, so any rough idea of their age, income, 
where they live, do they like to cook, do they cook their own food. Just, I'm just trying to make sure that, that we understand who, who's going to pay $12.99 for 4.5 ounces, and are they going to feel great about that? Yeah, I mean, I, it would mostly be people, I would say, of higher income levels because they're more willing to put forth their health first as well as um, paying this price for this type of product. Uh, therefore, I would say, like, it doesn't even have to necessarily be ketogenic and paleo people, just people trying to obtain a healthy lifestyle as having um, also the addition of a high quality fat in their diet. Um, I, I, my, our, you know, some of our discussion, our impression was that this is going to be someone who, um, uh, people who are probably single, uh, maybe a couple, they're, uh, single income or dual income, um, maybe 30, 30 to 35. So people who are, um, have a active lifestyle who want to eat better, but maybe don't have time. Maybe they're working a lot. Um, they have, uh, you know, a desire for high quality, tasty food. They may not have time to, they also want to stay in shape. They may not, you know, they're, they're looking to, you know, some of the diet trends to keep themselves fit and healthy. Um, so that, you know, that's, that's another way to kind of describe that kind of market fit. Oh, I don't know. I have a voice that carries, but in the cinnamon vanilla, you mentioned an artificial sweetener. Is there a brand name that I would recognize more than that? Because honestly, I, I'd never heard of what you used. Swerve is like the new kind of thing for sweeteners because predominantly we're used to seeing um, like Splenda or Stevia, this, they have different forms of it. So they have brown sugar, they have powdered sugar now, and they're all sugar free. So this is kind of like something that's actually pretty. So it's leading it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. This is the question for packaging. Um, what barrier property would you recommend because you have, um, unsaturated fat, omega-3, we know oxidize very quickly. So what will your recommendation will be for the um, barrier properties, oxygen transfer rate, or, you know, so, and number one. And then have you thought about, because this is natural product, but uh, it's a real butter, right? So have you thought about bioplastic rather than PET that you presented? So two questions. So uh, about the second thing, uh, it's uh, bioplastic. Um, it's not completely degradable, but there's one genus of microorganism uh, which belongs to the genus Nocardia. Uh, this uh, species, this genus can uh, to some extent degrade the plastic, but yeah, it's not completely biodegradable. And uh, with the packaging, I think any uh, like the light exposure, uh, so that's why we have the secondary packaging for it and oxygen and any kind of barrier. So it's seal, sealed completely. So there's no uh, kind of um, any gaps that are left for oxygen or any other um, like external contamination that can take place. Okay. And one of the uh, variables is very high salt. What, what would you do to reduce the, uh, the sodium and uh, not sacrifice the saltiness? Okay. So, uh, so there are two things that we have considered here is that this butter is not uh, to be consumed just like that. It's supposed to be on some kind of topping or salad dressing. Uh, so that's why we have added a little extra salt for that. But uh, yeah, but this can be like the butter can have a different version like low salt butter. Th those are now trendy. This can be made uh, low salt too. So my question is, why didn't you offer a non-flavored option? What went into your decision to not have non-flavored butter as an offering? So we were adhering to our challenge, which was given to us to make it into three different flavors. Already in the market, there are Guernsey butters available. That is why we were trying to develop a new product which had distinct flavors, and that's how we took this. 
and we don't go for the plain one. Okay. When, when we were doing some of our market research and uh, we were looking at a family-owned grocery store that actually carries the Guernsey cream and uh, talking with that store owner, asking him how some of those products move, he has a couple of smaller, smaller company smaller companies that have an, had an original and a couple different flavors and they actually ended up taking off the original flavor from their shelf because it wasn't moving as well as the flavor as the other options. So um, I think that's just looking at how the market is doing where if, if someone maybe is a, is a baker they know what they're reaching for when they if they're looking for an unsalted or just a salted butter. Um, so that's kind of a less of an opportunity for us to get into that market, but someone who's looking for trying something new may reach for, you know, a, a flavored product instead. Yeah. Sorry, one more. Yeah, sure. um, it, what's Swerve made of? Mm. What's Oh, I think it's monk fruit. It's monk fruit? I, I believe it's monk fruit. Okay, so that would be included in the, the, the ingredient statement? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you're, you're sure? Um, we initially didn't think we were going to include swerve, so oh, okay. like, throughout the process we ended up adding it because it was too better, like not sweet enough otherwise. So I, that's something to look into. Cool. Um, and for the vegetable oil, just because lots of keto friends, blah, 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 um, what kind of vegetable oil was it? Yeah. Um, it was uh, um, the uh, canola vegetable oil. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's something to get a little more resolution on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.